Washington football. Woo! Everybody and welcome to the Burgundy Zone. I am your host Kyle, and I am joined by my co-hosts Michael Hall and Michael Reed. We are joined by very special guest Mark Bullock of the formerly of the Athletic at Washington Post Sports. Thank you for joining us, Mark. How are you doing tonight? No, I'm good. Thanks. How are you guys doing? Doing fantastic, Mark. And your latest uh, column that I saw you produce because you're you're a big film guru. You know, you've watched a lot of film on the Washington football team, and your latest was on Hunter Henry the tight end that's currently going to be a free agent and how he would fit into this team. So if you could, please go into detail on what Hunter Henry would bring to this Washington football team. Yeah, sure. Um, so he's uh, an athletic receiving tight end, um, kind of more in the profile of a, a Jordan Reed, or not quite the same type of athlete as Jordan Reed. Um, and he's someone that could add an extra weapon to the offense. And, and I've, I've kind of long felt that, um, Logan Thomas did a lot better than I uh, anticipated him doing yeah. this season. Um, he had a very good season, but um, and he's a reliable target, um, does a lot of things well, but he doesn't separate from man coverage particularly well. Um, mm. He's not the most nuanced of route running, which is to be expected from a guy that you know is only recently a tight end. He's been right. a quarterback for most of his career, so he. Right. Um, He's he's did way better than I anticipated, but he's still not a guy that separates versus man coverage, and he's not necessarily the explosive athlete um, that uh, a Hunter Henry is, who who can separate um, with his both his route running and just his athleticism and his quick twitch um, ability. So um, I think he would make give you a, a a nice two tight end set that Turner would like because right. Turner's offense is all right. about creating matchup issues and um being able to force the defense to either play their base personnel and then spread out and pass on them or play a nickel personnel and bunch everything up and, and run all over them so um I, I think that would give them a nice um another weapon to give them some versatility on offense yeah uh, <clears throat> i really like hunter henry i've been a fan of his going back to college when he was at arkansas um, so you, uh, speaking of free agency, it's coming up next month. In your opinion, who's uh, some targets that the team should potentially try to go after this uh, upcoming offseason? Uh, well, I tweeted just today or the day of recording, and uh, I've, I've been watching uh, Marcus Williams, the safety from mm. the Saints, who I really liked coming out of college, and I watched him a bit his rookie year. Yeah, um, and I hadn't, I hadn't seen him for. A few seasons, but the infamous uh, what, uh, missed tackle, right? I was about to say it's a shame yeah. that he's so known for the Minneapolis miracle because right. he's so good. He's so good in coverage and just all around that he, he should be known for more than that. He's a very, very well-rounded safety. And, right. and after, after that missed tackle, I, I did a little thread on Twitter that, that did the rounds a little bit, um, showing like his good plays to be like, hey, mm. don't just remember him for that one tackle. He right, had a very right. good rookie season. Right. Um, <laughs> so. He he had a um, a um, a good season again this year from from what I've seen and he's someone that um, he's not necessarily like an Earl Thomas that can sit in the middle of the field and go sideline to sideline but right. he has enough range um, he has um, very good instincts he reads the game very well um, and, and that kind of makes up for not having the elite range he he can he can get where he needs to go um, and. He's often breaking on the ball as, mm. or sometimes before the quarterback's making the throw. Um, so he's someone that I think could play free safety. He, he could fit in both the cover three schemes and the quarter schemes that Washington uses a lot of. Um, so he's someone that I like uh, at wide receiver. I've written about Alan Robinson. I know everyone loves Alan Robinson. Mm. He's, he's kind of the guy everyone's buzzing about. Yeah. I, I love Alan Robinson too. No. I, I, I just... I don't know whether he's necessarily the best fit opposite McLaurin. Um, they're both ex receivers um, and, and they can make it work. Like some McLaurin could easily play Z, um, but I kind of like both in the ex receiver role and that's who I'd want to be going to in go-to situations. Um, so I, I've kind of thought they might look to more of a, a deep threat 
uh, opposite McLaurin to mm. stretch the field a little bit more. Um, so I, I've like. I quite like Will Fuller um, from the Texans, although he's slightly injury prone. If he can stay um, healthy, for sure. Yeah. I just yeah. mentioned him earlier today. I was like, why is nobody talking about Will Fuller? Right. right. Yeah, um, he's he's someone that um, in college I, I didn't like as much because he, he had a lot of drops and, and I thought right. he was a bit of a one-trick pony in college, but he yep. has developed quite a lot um, and he has a lot more to his game now. Um so I, I do like him, but obviously the injury questions are have to be answered with that. Um, the, the other guy that I'm keeping an eye on is if the Texans, because they're in their cap trouble, um, the Brandon Cooks, right. um, he can be cut for basically nothing. Um, yeah. He has no dead cap. So um, he's someone that I've been keeping an eye on, but as of yet, they haven't released him. So there's a couple of names, and obviously Hunter Henry is – someone else that if if i was washington i'd be i'd be looking to go after right and, and hunter henry is also interesting because uh scott turner has said in the past that his offense really works best with two tight ends like he wants two tight ends to kind of be able to run with those two so it would be interesting to see logan thomas and hunter henry together um alan robinson i would kind of feel bad for if he went from the jaguars quarterback situation <laughs> to the bears quarterback situation right. then to washington so uh for sure I don't know if that'll happen but um uh, branching off of your safety, I, I know you were talking about Marcus Williams. With Cam Curl's emergence, what do you think happens with Landon Collins? What, what do you think? There's all these people talking about switching Landon Collins to linebacker. Uh, I know he's owed a lot of money, um, so it's not necessarily going to be easy to move on from him. But what do you, you see happening with Landon? Yeah, it's um, it's a tough one because the, the number one thing is we don't know exactly when he's going to be healthy um, because – it, it was a pretty severe injury, Very and, injury. And, and that can take a while to recover from. So right. um, we don't even know if he's going to be there in training camp or even at the start of the season or, or, or what. So we, we don't really know exactly what's going to happen there. I, I think the best case scenario is he's healthy um, and he pushes Carl for in camp for the starting strong safety spot. Uh, and, if he doesn't get it, if, if Carl, I, I would anticipate the way Carl played last year compared to Collins. I would anticipate Carl winning that. Mm-hmm. Um, in theory, they could move Carl to free safety, um, but that would take him out of the box a little bit more. And right. he played right. very, very well in the box. So um, they they could also go back to using Carl how they initially used him, which was the big, big nickel or right. the buffalo, as they called it. Um, mm-hmm. So. They could do that with Curl, um, or they could, as you said, Collins could play some linebacker. I, I, I would guess he probably doesn't want to do that. Um, right. But he he could play some, possibly some sub package linebacker where he's a linebacker, but he's still kind of a safety because it's sub packages and it's passing situations. So he's not having to really get in and mix it with the big offensive lineman in the run. So. Um, I, I think he could do that. And I think he's instinctive enough in the run game to play linebacker. The, the mm. issue is his size and his frame. Right. Um, when you're a safety working in the box, you're fitting the last gap. Whereas if you're a linebacker, you have to take on blocks and, and shed blocks and, and get off of guys that are 30, 50, 60 pounds heavier than you. So right. um, it, it's a, it's a lot, tougher to play that way um but he could do it it's tough because it's it's a i don't really know it's the answer but i (laughs) i I, I would i would think they would start off with just him competing with carl for the starting strong safety position if he's healthy right and then so let me ask you mark because you watch a lot of film and you were able to watch this season in particular is it as simple as adding chase young and cameron curl to this defense that was able to leapfrog them from being 27th in the league in 2019 to leapfrogging up to number two overall defense uh, for 2020. What in your film review, what have you seen from this defense that they were doing so differently in one year? Uh, they were playing fundamentally more sound football. Mm. Um, they, they, if they weren't playing as complex stuff, um, I, I think what they tried to do under Minuski was, wasn't necessarily the worst thing to try to do, but the, the, it just didn't click with the players that they had for whatever reason. Um, they, they tried to do a lot of pattern matching and um, and stuff like that, which 
um, works but requires a lot of communication. When it when it when it's communicated well and you have a lot of talent in the secondary, it is almost in, well. It's probably the best form of coverage. But right. um, when when it's badly communicated and and you don't have the talent, then it's the most easy to get give up big plays and what have you. So. Um, they, they went back to being a lot more fundamentally sound. They played a lot more quarters coverage than I expect them to, and and that's always pretty sound. Mm. Um, they played plenty of cover three, obviously. Um, so they, they weren't doing anything particularly special. They were just playing kind of basic stuff and, and executing fundamentals pretty well. Right. And uh, sticking with the defensive side of the ball, Kyle brought up Chase Young. Um, obviously, he was defensive uh, rookie of the year this year. What do you anticipate from him going into his second year? And could he possibly be up there for his play with the uh, defensive player of the year candidate? Uh, I don't know necessarily defensive player of the year candidate next year. Um, he, he still has a little bit to go for that, but mm. I, I anticipate him being in the mix for that, certainly in a couple of years time. Um, right. he, he's that talented. So, um, and, and, you know, perhaps he gets there next year. Um, we'll see. You know, it, it, if he takes the kind of leap that Montez Sweat took this year, then um, that would certainly put him in the conversation. Um, I, I, I would still think Aaron Donald probably dominates that conversation, but yeah. um, Chase Young certainly could get there. Um, and I think he will within two or three years, but not necessarily next season. Right. And we'll, we'll stick on the defensive side of the ball since we're all asking those questions. Uh, one thing that I, I've been talking about that I think is really going to affect this team is going to be the loss of Ryan Kerrigan more than likely uh, in free agency and Ryan Anderson, because, you know, those guys really spelled uh, Chase Young and Montez Sweat, these young guys, and really helped get them acclimated to the NFL. So with just if you look at it, just having Chase Young and Montez Sweat, is there anybody that they can bring in in free agency or maybe in the mid to late rounds of the draft that, that you think could really come in and kind of help that backup edge rusher position? Yeah, um, that's been an interesting one because for the longest time we've kind of been lamenting not having a second pass rusher. Now that right. they've got two, it's why don't we have three? <laughs> right. Um, so, um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, you do you do need a, a, a good rotation. Um, I, I I think the likes of Sweat and Young are both uh, young and um, talented enough to take a bigger workload and handle that without being spelled as much. Um, obviously, if someone gets injured, then you're going to need a third guy. And and they do need a third guy. But I think James Smith-Williams, who they had um, seventh round last year, he he split some time yeah, um, at end and, and at tackle. Um, if they needed to, if Matt Ioannidis comes back healthy, they could kick Jonathan Allen out to be a, a heavy end um, and then put Matt Ioannidis back in at the three-tech um and that would work um so they have some solutions on the roster already um i, I certainly uh, would anticipate them adding a, another one somewhere i don't think it would be a high profile guy um it could be another day three pick or no jj um, watt no I'd, I'd, I'd be surprised if they i mean how much fun would that be but right. uh, it, it, I'd, I'd be very very surprised i, I think he probably um, will end up in, in Green Bay, I would have thought. Yeah, and so I have to – let's keep flip this to the offensive side of the football. The only quarterback – there's two quarterbacks currently for the Washington football team on their roster. They just re-signed Taylor Heineke. The other is Alex Smith, and it just got reported the other day that Alex Smith wants to continue playing football. So, Mark, do you think it's going to be for the Washington football team this year? Uh. I, I doubt it at his current contract. Um, I, I, I would think they probably want to get that cap space. Um, I, I thought the only way that Smith would be on the roster is if they got a high draft pick in, like right. in the top five and they got a rookie that they wanted to kind of sit behind him because we've seen Alex Smith is that perfect mentor quarterback um, and we saw how what it did for Mahomes in Kansas City. So... Um, that would have been the only real scenario that I would think Alex Smith would stay. Um, mm. But with that seemingly unlikely now, I would imagine he ends up cut and possibly goes down to Jacksonville and 
and does the mental role Ooh, for Trevor oh, Lawrence. Oh, wow. That's exactly what yeah. I said earlier to somebody, too. And then I was like, oh, that's a good point. Mm. But, uh, yeah, sticking with the quarterback uh, position, uh, obviously it was reported over the weekend that the team had a lot of interest in trading for Marcus Mariota. Uh, I know Sam Darnold's a name that's been floated out there with maybe links to this team. And I know Washington Twitter every day likes to ride a new quarterback wave. So <laughs> uh, I've heard Gardner Minshew thrown out there a couple of times here and there. So in your opinion, which one of those three is on the roster in 2021? And which one of those is a better fit for the Scott Turner offense? Um, I don't know which one will be there. I, I, I would guess that they probably would like Mariota more. Um, yeah. The, the issue is that the contract has escalated so that if he gets traded, then yeah. um, he gets a lot more guaranteed money and they could possibly work out a deal where they add a little bit more guaranteed money, but they get to spread the cost over two or three years. Um, and that makes mm. it a little bit more palatable. But um, yeah, so I, I, for me, I, I, I like Mariota. I also like parts of Darnold's game um, right. and I'd be intrigued with, what they could do with him and if for the if right price could, for the, exactly for the right price um but i i, I like Mariota's skill set com, uh, as a package more than i like donald's um mm. and i think that there would be a lot that turner could do with his offense with Mariota and adding his running element into the run game um and uh the the stuff that they can do with read options and uh, run pass options and all of the misdirection that they, they like to do with the two running back sets at the mm -hmm. moment. Um, all of that stuff would all be enhanced with someone like Mariota in the backfield as well. So um, for me, that's the guy I'd probably be looking to target my, myself right now. But um, I, I also like what Donald brings to the table. He, right. he has kind of a, I understand what people said by uh, the it factor that he has. It's, it was hard to define, but when I watched him for the Jets this year, um, he often played his best football in big situations. So like mm. Third downs, he would make big plays. Two-minute drills, he'd make big plays. Um, those kind of things, fourth quarter. Right. Um, so th when the moment is at its biggest is when he plays his best, and that that's always an attractive trait in a quarterback. So. Uh, there, there's stuff to like about Donald as well, but personally, I'm I'm probably more side, siding towards Mariota. See, yeah, I, I brought up Marcus Mariota either towards the end of the season or, or early, very very early on uh, after Washington got eliminated. And these guys are like, "Don't even say it, don't do it, don't bring up Marcus." <laughs> and I was like, "Hey, I think he'd be a decent fit." Uh, Darnold, I'm right there with you. Uh, it was interesting with Darnold when he came out his rookie year, uh, everybody was just talking about how he ran the way he ran in training camp. They, they were just very impressed with everybody on the jets and that organization. I guess they just hadn't seen a quarterback in so long that they were, <laughs> but, but uh, sticking that uh, kind of in the backfield, I know everybody wants to talk about the quarterback position, but running back is, is a fairly interesting position to me. We've talked about it before on the show. Uh, we've, we've had a couple of people uh, who post fan questions say that we're one injury away from this, backfield being really just depleted like if Antonio Gibson goes down then what happens do you think that running back is another position that they may address uh in the either free agency or in the draft uh it might be a guy that they uh, they they might look to add a guy in like the later rounds of the draft or the second or third wave of free agency I, I don't right. think it's a priority for them um because just because running backs are a diamond dozen um and exactly you can get production out of certain guys um, i mean they found a role for peyton barber last year and, and I, I i wouldn't want barber being the guy that carries the load every week but um in a situation where gibson got injured i like mckissick as a runner um i think he could execute a lot of what they do um yeah. and they could easily find a another guy that can do it that has a similar skill set um as you say in the later rounds or mm -hmm. a dra an undrafted free agent or something like that i i don't think it's a priority for them but right. certainly they could look to add a, a fourth guy in, in training camp or something like that yeah now mark this show is called the hot seat it's a new segment that we're starting and uh, i was able to give it to some fans to be able to get some input from them so i wanted to ask you the same question i asked them you are the gm of the washington football team you can bring in one free agent, 
you can re-sign only one player. And what are you doing at 19? <laughs> uh, so my re-signing would be Brandon Sheriff. Okay. Um, because I think he is an anchor on that offensive line, and Naturally. with right. with that, they they found a combination inside. Um, right. With, yes. With Schweitzer, Rudy, and Sheriff as as a really good interior three. So that's something to build from. Um, my free agent signing. I, I I do quite like Hunter Henry with what that would offer to the offense. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think that could offer you just as much as a number two receiver. Um, so mm. I think I would probably lean towards Hunter Henry if I can just pick one free agent. Mm. Um, and then at 19, I don't, I haven't done enough work on the draft yet yes. to say <laughs> who I'd go for at 19. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty there, but possibly right. a, le- a left tackle maybe right. um, okay. probably would be high up on my list or a linebacker. I like it. Yeah. Right. yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, yeah. Sticking with kind of the GM front office, what are your thoughts on the Chris Polian hire and what's your thoughts on the new kind of brain trust and the uh, reassemblement of the front office? Yeah, I'm kind of on the fence about it at this point. Um, the everyone's praising them for bringing in a lot of experience and right. um, and having so much experience in the front office through lots of different positions. And, and um, they were all former GMs and, and what have you. And, and that's great. But I mean, they were all former GMs for a reason that they, they, if they were as amazing as they're made out to be, they would still be GMs. Um, but you know, they, they certainly, every GM goes through their, their ups and downs and the hits and misses on players and what have you. So, oh, yeah. um, I, I, I do have a slight concern that there might be too many cooks in the, in the kitchen there with, uh, both the Martins or Martin Mayhew and, uh, Marty, Marty Gurney yeah. and, uh, now Chris Polian and, and they've got uh, Eric Stokes and all these different guys. I, I feel like there might be a few too many voices in there, but, um, if they can keep egos out of the room, then, you, you know, perhaps it works. I, I personally liked what Carl Smith brought to the organization. Um, and I personally, I would have seen him promoted and, and given him more power. And, and hmm. he, you know, the thing I point to is at this time last year, Ron Rivera kept emphasizing that the reason he picked Washington over like putting different teams against them um, was because of the roster, the young players they had on the roster and what they were building. And that's largely down to Carl Smith. So, um, you know, if you, if you liked it that much, why did you get rid of Carl Smith? And I get that there's the association with Bruce Allen, but you know, can you hold everyone by Bruce Allen's crimes? I don't know. Um, (laughs) That's kind of where I'm at. I'm I'm kind of on the fence. I'm certainly willing to, see how it goes um and but i i'm cautious about it too i, I think there could be downsides yeah and to wrap this up mark it's the million dollar question the taylor heineke signing you know everyone a lot of the fan base is slotting him in as the backup quarterback do you agree with that uh as the backup sure like i i think it will be a, a camp competition like the Good. when they initially released the numbers obviously it was the agent's ends of the numbers where mm-hmm. it was the eight million dollars and at that point it was well that's definitely not nothing that's something and it's right. not starter money but it's probably backup money but when you look at the actual details of the contract like they could pretty much cut him tomorrow for very little cost. So right. uh, I, I think they'll bring back Kyle Allen. They'll bring in Heineke and, and both of them will compete and um, whoever's the better will get the backup. Um, and, and maybe they keep three quarterbacks on the roster but with the injuries they had last year. Who knows? Yeah, absolutely. You're right. With the quarterback position here in Washington, it always seems to be uh... – you got to have three because you never know what's going to happen, right? <laughs> well, Mark, yeah. I, can't, uh, I can't thank you enough for being able to take time out and talk some balls, some X's and O's with us. You know, we are no uh, no strangers to the UK uh, and the European folks over there. So really appreciate you taking the time out, sir. Of course. Anytime, guys. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate you have a good it. night. Have a good thank you. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. All right, everybody. We just spoke with Mark Bullock. That was phenomenal. That was great. I love hearing Always his yeah. his film breakdowns are phenomenal, dude. He I love I love awesome. film guys, man. I love film guys. Yeah. They just they, you just you 
trust them so much yeah. with, with what they see with their evaluations. Right. And like I said to to Bullock, you know, this is the hot seat. We started a new segment here. We're going to get on fan questions, but first, we wanted to give fans the ability to be the GM of the Washington Football Team to say, "Hey, what would you do with what would you do with these?" And my whole thought process is, you know, you get one free agent to bring in, you got to resign one player. And what are you doing at 19? Necessarily, does that mean you have to take a player at 19? No, you can trade up. You can trade back. What are you thinking about doing there? And the first one is the colonel, my man. And the first one he says is he's letting Sheriff walk. He's taking Alajay Vera Tucker at 19, which I believe is a left tackle, if I'm not mistaken. He's a tackle slash guard from USC, yeah. And he's resigning Darby. And then the free agent that he is targeting right now is I believe I'm sorry I'm trying to look it's Allen Robinson it looks like oh no Shaquille right. Barrett he said Shaquille Barrett would be the one he'd go after and wow hey I mean you can never have enough pass rushers I've been saying you gotta yeah. look for somebody to back up these edge rushers uh That's I think a there's a little point. more pressing needs out the out there um but I think you do kind of I mean with the Vera Tucker if you draft him if you let Sheriff walk you do kind of fill that gap at right guard you can uh, with somebody else talented and more cheap uh, obviously that uh, i mean Shaq Barrett would be phenomenal i don't know if that's the route they're going to go i don't know if they're going to invest that much money in the defensive line he's but, saying at the uh, parade that he's coming back next year to tampa bay yeah. so oh, i'm sure right yeah they're going to try to bring back all this guy they're gonna bring bruce arians is like you all are coming back and i'm sure right. he, he was like three <laughs> beers a uh, couple beers deep at that point you know you'd love to but there's no guarantee that can happen now right. this next one tony Tony sitting in the hot seat. What would he do with these spots? And I like this one the most. This is my guy, Tony. He said he drafts Zayvon Collins at 19. He says he's solid value for him with range, and the defense yep. needs playmakers, especially in the, in the linebackers. 100% agree with that. His free agent is Corey Davis. That's who he would go I like and Corey get. Davis, too. And then he'd re-sign Ronald Darby. I think that's and, a slam yeah. dunk. Yes. I, I, don't, I, I, think, don't hate, I don't hate that at all. I think that's fantastic, especially when you look at Corey Davis. Corey Davis is uh, – he, he's – okay with being the number two guy because uh, A.J. Brown kind of took over as the number one. He kind of settled into his role. I mean, I think that's where he fits best. He would compliment McLaurin really well. And then obviously you feel the need a linebacker with Zayvon Collins, who we've all talked about, we all love. And Ronald Darby bringing him back is so important. So, hey, I would love that. I yeah. would love it. Ronald Darby was on Grant and Danny, uh, I think, sometime last week. And he pretty much wearing? said that. Yeah, he pretty much said that. Like, yeah, he lo- obviously he's from the area, grew up rooting for the team. He loves being home. So he wants to come back. It's just about – at what price and the number and the years and all that good stuff. So, I mean, hey, if Ronald Darby can come back, I would love that. Yeah, absolutely. And then the Caucasian Sasquatch, no stranger to this podcast. (laughs) Keith Gray, the biggest troll on Twitter. I know he hates it when people say that. But him at 19, he said he'd give up a first and a third to move up to get Trey Lance. His free agent acquisition would be Allen Robinson, and and he would re-sign Darby. Uh, I think – Go ahead. Go, no, 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 Hall. I don't want to take it from you. No, no, I was going to say, look, I see the hype on Trey Lance. Obviously, I see, like, the potential there, the tools are there. All, right. The thing I cannot get over is, obviously, this is, like, his worst game in his college career. But you're playing against University of New Hampshire, and you completed 50% of your passes. Right. Like, like come on, man. Like, it's- obviously, the rushing side of things – I think he ran for like 155 yards, two touchdowns. So, was that the he, one game this year that he played? Uh, no, it was not against no, UCA. Okay, that was, that was about to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. This okay, is like 2019. This is his worst yeah. game of like his two right, years. Right, right, right. Worst game, but it's still it's just like you're going against guys that are like literally never going to sniff the league. Yeah. And you completed 50 percent of your passes. Well, obviously, people have bad games. And look, he's always been my comp has been Josh Allen, just because wildly inaccurate, right. coming from a smaller school. The competition level, is it going to be, like, comparable to NFL? Obviously not. It's going to take some time to get used to that. But you see what happened once you get him a legit receiver in his third year. He right. just boom, 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 blooms. My problem is, and my kind of draw on that is, what if he doesn't turn into Josh Allen? Right. Then we're right back to square one. We just wasted another right. couple of years of a rookie quarterback and- pick. And we're right back right. in the dungeon trying to figure it out again. And that that's another thing with, with Trey Lance. Is I Look, I like Trey Lance. I – I've always liked Trey Lance. I just think that missing this season, COVID really screwed him mm. uh, pretty bad because he needed that experience. And look, the stats are fantastic. The skill set is all there, Hall, like you said. 
he is kind of comparable to Josh Allen in a way. He's a couple inches shorter, Very. but he, he's a runner. He's faster, obviously, but but yeah. he's a tough, powerful runner. He lowers his shoulder. He's got a, he's got a decent arm, not as strong as Allen, but he's and he's wildly inaccurate. And that can that be fixed? My thing is is if this team is in win now mode. You don't trade up for a quarterback that's going to be ready in two, three years. That's going to Correct. take some time because, and he is going to have to sit. If he, if a lot of Dwayne Haskins, even though we didn't trade up, but right, right. Um, and look, I, I'd like Trey Lance if we were in a position to start somebody for a couple years and then have Trey Lance sit and watch them for two years and then bring him in. I'd be all about it. But right now, I don't, I'm not comfortable giving up a first and a third trade up and get Trey Lance. No, absolutely not. And that's what I've always said is like, I do, I do not think that they're going to be trading up any assets for these quarterbacks. And the reason why I say that is because if you are trading up assets to get one of these quarterbacks, that means they're the guy you believe in right. them. You're giving up some of your future to bring them in. And if you're doing that for Trey Lance, who's going to have to sit. I know Keith is saying he wants it to battle out between Heineke, Allen and uh, Trey Lance. But when I watch Trey Lance's film, the 2019 film is phenomenal. It jumps out at you. He is electric. And I said this in our group chat today. I feel like the 2020 tape, that one game, he was trying to do too much. But one of the reasons why I felt that Joe Burrow was so good coming out of LSU was because he had that click in his head. He had that timing in his head. When he didn't have the first, second read, he knew to go down the check down with CEH and Clyde Edward Tillaire. With, with Trey Lance, he doesn't have that. Trey Lance, he ha when he throws it to the check down, it's a design play. Same thing I saw with Jordan Love. And then there's right. plays where he has a check down available with at least seven yards of separation between any defender, and he throws it over his head to a guy who's strapped up in double coverage 20 yards downfield. That's decision-making, and that's not having the wherewithal, knowing where to go with the football. And then he was lacking touch in that game as well. Like I said, maybe he was trying to do too much. He was trying to impress NFL teams. He was trying to show that he can have a dart, that he can throw a 60-yard rope, which I'm sure that he can. And I've said before, when he's on the run, his accuracy on the run is phenomenal. He reminds me of Aaron Rodgers when he's on the run. But really, to be honest, I am not trading up for Lance. If he falls to 19, fantastic. I love it. Let's pull the trigger. Let's get it done. But I'm not trading up for it. You need those assets to be able to do that. I will say also, to, if he falls to 19... That is also kind of questionable because this is a guy that everyone says is going to be a top 10 pick. I mean, McShay just had That's him going, I think, either Kuiper or McShay, I forget which one it is, has him going eight right now to Carolina in his new, newest mock draft. So if a guy that's supposed to be going top 10, maybe top 12 at the at the maximum, falls to 19 like that, there are also kind of questions on, like, so why didn't the other quarterback needy teams take him right then and there? if he's that franchise guy. So that's why I'm kind of skeptical on him. Look, he can come out and be great and turn into, like, offensive rookie of the year, a great quarterback in the NFL. But like like Reed said, if this team is in win-round mode, that means, like, you're not going to trade up to get a guy. It's like you're going to get a guy that's going to come in and, like, make them compete and make them competitors right then and there. Right. right. And that's a, great, that's a great point by you. Now let's move on to our fan questions. And the first one we're going to start with Freddie, the hammer. Uh, from the H2BR podcast, who, congratulations, they had Jack Del Rio on. Yeah, it's so um, huge. The, it oh, was fantastic. a great episode. I'm, I can't tell you how well done that was. Good for you, Freddie. Credit Good to you, you Freddie, Freddie and, Maddie and Maddie Jane. You guys yeah, killed job. it. His question is, how would you feel about Kellen Mond in the second read? I We've talked about it. I would love Kellen Mond in the second round. Look, some people are going to be like, second, that's a little bit too high for Mond. No, it's not. Kellen Mond has the skill set that you need in the NFL to succeed these days. Kellen Mond, we've talked about it, I think, a few times now. If you really go back and watch his film, Kellen Mond's accuracy issues that everybody talks about are really not as bad as everybody's saying. His receivers dropped a lot of balls. Um, uh, he's He showed in the Senior Bowl how good he can be. Like, this guy is fantastic. He's experienced. He started forever. That's what you want in your quarterback. I Like we've talked about, Kyle, I think you're the one who said that he reminds you of Dak Prescott. I think that is a perfect comparison. I think he's somebody who you can take in the second, maybe even third round, and you can address other needs early on. Right. And that can be your guy. And you know, he could come in, he could win a quarterback battle with these guys day one. I would love to be able to go the Kellen Mond route. Um, I think round two, I would love that. I'm a huge Kellen Mond guy. And what about you, Hall? Would you take Kellen Mond in the second? I know that you and I have talked about him a lot. You know, I loved his yeah. film breakdown. I'm all about it. Oh, you already know. Like, I've told you my affection for Kellen Mond. That's a guy that I said, like I said. <laughs> Hall, has, Hall actually has a couple six foot, six foot three inch posters of Kellen Mond. They're life size posters. Yeah, man. With his shirt off that he got <laughs> from Kellen Mond. 
I mean, I wasn't going to tell everyone that, but thanks for putting that Turn out there. Turn your camera on, Hall. Turn your camera on. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it when I was setting up your mic. I know what I saw. Nah, but um, like a, that's a guy that I come, I've seen since a freshman when he was at Texas A&M. He was getting coached by uh, Kevin Hamlin, who coached Johnny Menzel. And back then, I was kind of like, I don't know if he's going to succeed just because of that offense doesn't really right. translate to the NFL. Once they fired him, brought in Jimbo Fisher, I was like, you know what? That's going to do great things for Kellen Mons, like what he did for Jameis Winston. Yeah. It's more of a pro style offense with like the kind of spread concepts and stuff like that. Yep. Um, if you want to talk about his accuracy issues, it got better every every year that he was there. They still exist a little bit, but they're they not as exist. bad as people. Exactly. Were he be. developed more touch on his balls throughout yes. his years in college. He, yep. Like I said, got more accurate. He definitely translates to this current NFL where he's a mobile guy. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's a mobile guy. Not that much of a strong arm, but he throws with anticipation. If you don't mm. have a strong arm, that's what you need. Yep. Those anticipatory strong growth. enough, yeah, exactly strong enough. And uh, I forgot what I was going to say because I started coughing, but yeah, he's yeah, experience, was, yeah, experience, yeah, right. exactly experience. And uh, he yeah, like I said, the SEC too, dude, yeah, exactly, exactly. SEC. And then if you want to like go against like oh, the SEC, blah blah blah, stuff like that, look what he did in the senior bowl, right? Going against guys that are be going to be potential NFL players, and he showed out who was the uh, offensive or the he was the MVP, practice MVP of yep. the week he was the game mvp of the uh senior bowl so just a high character guy he's a leader and like you said he's a i look at him as a poor man's dak where if you have enough weapons around him he can definitely take you to the promised land yeah, right. no, yeah and real, real fast I'm sorry, Kyle. he started three seasons and then his his freshman year he started or he played in 10 games so yeah. he's Ooh. got that experience he's polished. like all yeah. exactly go ahead kyle i'm sorry no, I was just going to say that, um, you know, I've said from the jump, as soon as they signed Taylor Heineke, I told everyone, you know, this means that they aren't going to be trading multiple assets for Watson or Carr, or they're they're not going to be trading up in the draft. What they're essentially telling you, it is going to be a competition, and I would absolutely love Alan, adding Kellen Mond to this mix, if Alex Smith doesn't return, of Allen, uh, Kellen Mond, and Taylor Heineke and saying, look, let the best man win. And to be perfectly honest, I would absolutely love to see Kellen Mond in the burgundy and gold. I think that we could really catch fire with that. Um, he keeps his eyes downfield when he's out of the pocket. I think that'd be a slam dunk. Yeah. Now, our next question is from Mike Puckett. He's, is it a must that the Washington football team makes the playoffs this coming season after this past season for Ron and the team, Hall? Ooh, that's a good question. That's um, a great question. That is a very good question. You know what? Normally, I would say yes, because you want to keep that uh, momentum going. The only reason I will say it's not a must, I will say they should make the playoffs. They, can, they should keep the momentum going forward, keep building. The only reason I say it's not a must is because this team is already maybe a year or two ahead of schedule of the rebuild that they're supposedly doing. So the only reason that we won the East last year is because it was a, such a down division. Everyone was injured. Obviously, you're going to come back next year. Not everyone's going to be injured next year. Dak's coming back. Saquon's coming back. That offensive line for the Dallas Cowboys will be back. Zeke will probably be better with the offensive line healthy mm-hmm. and Dak back. So um, obviously Daniel Jones will be better with Saquon back there. Probably not. So, eh, I mean, probably not. He'll <laughs> <you know. laughs> be a smidge better. But um, yeah, only reason I won't say it's a must. If they win, they have to. They have to win more than seven games. That's a must. You have to win more than seven. You got to keep building to make the playoffs. NFC is super loaded. We have a first uh, first place schedule next going into the next year. So if they regress minorly and don't make the playoffs, I'll be okay with that. But if they have to win at least eight plus games next year. So let me combine the next question. That was a great question from Mike. So let's combine it. I know we're going to combine the two questions. And it was Scott Hartley's question, the inquirer with a tougher schedule ahead next season, going against the first place schedule. Where, what would you see as a good season? Eight and eight. And so I'll let you answer that Reed, Cause Hall basically said over seven, seven games for that. Yeah, um, well, I, I'll go off of the first one too. Um, I don't think it's a necessity necessarily that they that they win or that they make the playoffs, just because I think that they are a couple years ahead of schedule in terms of them making the playoffs. That the roster, it was talented, but they definitely got more out of it than they probably should have. I know it was a bad division, but um, it, they got this first place. Look, a lot's going to happen this off season, but this first place schedule is going to be very tough on them. But I so that will I will say that. So that also leads me to believe, though, that they finished seven and nine last year. They won the division. But are With they playing going... four different quarterbacks? Exactly. Yeah. But so that all depends on that. A lot of things can happen. Right. If, if you're just going based off of what you see and no injuries, whatever. Having. 
going up against a tougher schedule, do they get more wins than seven? I don't know. I mean, they should improve because they should improve the places that they saw as weaknesses. So I'm going to see, I'm going to say right away where I'm going to say next year, I think that they don't need to make the playoffs, but eight wins will be fantastic. I think that that'll still be considered a successful season. Um, and I think that that'll be okay with me. I, I mean, and then they can continue to progress and progress and become the team that we know that they can be, but it's tough. Those are two very good questions. I definitely think that they need to make the playoffs next season without a doubt. They, they because this is not something where you can go back and take a step back or two. You know, saying that this team is ahead of schedule, meaning making But is the playoffs, it really is it really a step back if they don't gonna make it? My question, that was going to be my question. Yes. Is it really a step back even though the rest of the division was so trash? Because yeah, the rest they, of the division is going to be better. Because that's so, I know that's what I'm saying. It's going to so, so, level itself So then out. so then so that if they don't make the playoffs or if they do not let's say seven games or whatever and they don't make it do, so then is that a failure in your that's a failure in your eyes? So no no, let me get it better. Since there's 17 games Good next year. So One at a say, time, fellas. Sorry. So if it's 17 game season, say they go nine and eight, ten and seven, but they don't make the playoffs because uh, they kicked out of a wild card spot. Yeah. So if, is that a failure or a success in your opinion? That, that is a failure in my opinion. They need to be winning this division and they Will need to be solidified. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not like Ron in I'm particular, just, depending on whatever I'm happens. Just, I'm just kidding. I know, I know. <laughs> but my point is, like, they, they kind of solidified themselves last year by basically saying this is our division. And with this defense, I think with the second year under their belt, I, I know everyone's coming back healthy. But at the same time, this is a Washington team that now ha actually has postseason experience going against the Super Bowl champions and Tom Brady. I said it all last year. This team has to learn how to lose before they learn how to win. And when they went through that with the playoffs, seeing what Tom Brady did, I think this team kind of has a maturity about them heading into the next season. I know they have a first-place schedule. That's great. But if they have competent quarterback play, they can play maybe one, two quarterbacks all season long, this team without a doubt can win this division. The defense for, uh, for Dallas is atrocious. We don't know how Jalen Hurts is going to look in Philly next year. And with Daniel Jones and the Giants, all they do have is Saquon Barkley. And – I know their the defense, defense is too. good, yeah. but Leonard Williams is a free agent, is a projected yeah. free agent as well. So they might be losing one of the biggest uh, pieces on defense there. This yeah. team, without a doubt, should win the playoffs next, uh, make the playoffs next season. Yep. And I will say it's most likely going to have to be at nine and eight with the 17 game schedule. Right. They're going to have to be above 500. You know, we can't be around the same. I know it's a tougher schedule and everything, but I, I really do feel and I have a, a sense of confidence with this team heading into next season. It One. just kind of seems more mature. But that's right. the thing. Then. So say they do go 9-8, and eight, they don't make the playoffs. So that is still a failure to you? Yeah, they still win nine games. They should be winning the division without a doubt. Um, one one thing, another thing I will say about the Giants, they do not have a Terry McLaurin. They don't have. Yeah. I'm not saying that Terry's better, but overall, their pass catchers are better than ours at the moment. A lot's That's gonna crack. happen during free agency and the draft. But just looking at the roster right now, the, like Logan Paulson said, that I mean, if you really like match them up position by position, the Giants they're a lot better than people give them credit for. Um, oh yeah. But yeah, yeah I think. Obviously, you would like to see that natural progression of us making the playoffs again, really putting our foot down on the division and, and biting off kneecaps. I, think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think it's, I'm just going to say, I don't think it's necessarily a failure if they don't make the postseason. I will say, but if they we should. go back to back playoffs, I might run around the streets naked because I can't even remember the last time that's happened. And in my life. let's timestamp this, Kyle. Remember the day, remember the episode. <laughs> Noted. And we're going to remember that he said that. <laughs> I'm Noted. going live from the Burgundy Zone uh, Facebook page. Running butt well, has don't naked. do that. <laughs> <laughs> get a hey man, Facebook chat. Hey, you guys wanted to stamp and quote it. It's going down. Dude, we well, might. So we now, might, now they have to not make the playoffs next year. So I might actually away, sponsorships everything. Let's I'm going to promote. <laughs> I'm going to promote that video on Facebook. Actually, I'm going to. I'm going to promote it on P Hub. <laughs> right. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much to Mike and Scott. Those are great questions. Now, Paul Murphy, a uh, fellow UK guy, has a question for us. Mar Mariota. Yes or no? He said, he, I saw him live at the London game a few years ago for the Titans and Chargers, and he performed pretty well that day. And I'll start with you, Reed. Uh, I'm going yes. I, I think that Marcus Mariota, I'm willing to take a flyer on him this year. He's still talented. He does fit this offense well. I'm going to go with the yes uh, for the same thing with Darnold, for the right price. Um, and all of what I'm saying is just bring him in here to compete. If you can't get anybody better for the right price, bring Mariota in here to compete. I think he can be successful with this team. It depends on how they get him. If they, right. if the, because look, what's happening right now with the Raiders is that they are very over the cap. Now they hit, they can release three players off an article that I read and be under twenty six million dollars. They can erase that right then and there. Mariota's cap number being at ten million is way too high for me. 
to be perfectly honest, with what he's produced so far in the NFL. He's been sacked 155 times since he's been in the NFL. In 2019 with the Titans. Good offensive line, too. In, in, with the Titans in 2019, so the dude was line. sacked 25 times in seven right. games. You know what that Get, tells me? He, sh- he struggles to read the field. Because remember when RG3 was here, he was getting sacked out the wazoo. And when he said, I need a better offensive line and everything. Then the following year, he goes to, to Cleveland. And in three games, he was sacked one less time than Kirk Cousins was in 16 games. That tells me you can't read the field. You can't get the ball out of your hands quick enough. And that's what scares me about Mariota. So if the Raiders do release Mariota and they serve up that $10 million cap space, because make no mistake about it, the Raiders want to get rid of that $10 million. And by giving too much in order to do something they want to do, I don't like that at all. I want to see it, that number come down. I want to see him get released and possibly then bring him in. But that being said, I like Kellen Mond that much. If I'm going to take a flyer on a guy to come in and compete, it's going to be Kellen Mond, a young dude on a young salary that has a lot to prove. I Look, does Marriott fit the offense? Without a doubt, he does. But uh, like giving up a third or a fourth for him is way too high at this point. I, I was kind of feeling that way over the weekend, but now, no, I'm out of it. What about you, Hall? Uh, I'll go back and forth on this like pretty much every other minute because <laughs> <laughs> part of me is like, I know what Marcus Mariota is. I've already seen his ceiling. I know what I'm going to get out of him, and it's not very inspiring at all. You're going to win maybe eight, nine. If you're lucky, ten games based on your running game and your defense, how they play which I was better than the quarterbacks that we currently have in the building. That's a good question too. Um, I will say, yes, I would, I would put, more talent. Uh, I don't know, man, but I would put he's probably more talented hundred percent. He's definitely 100%. more talented as far as like arm strength and like athleticism, but yeah, way more talented. What I've seen from Taylor Heineke in those five quarters, I've maybe seen from Mariota, maybe like an equal of like, 10 to 12 quarters in his whole career, you know? So it's like... Right, but people uh, also had ex- expectations for Mario. I know, yeah, he's in. number two they, overall they were, pick. They were, they were going to try to do whatever they could. Defensive coordinators were looking at it. Reports from camp where he was amazing. Yeah. And it was all... So it's kind of one of those things where it's like, do you know what you're getting with Mariota? And if and you that's, think you do, yeah. That's but, why I go back and forth, because it's like, yeah, yeah. are you going to um, get are you going to get the, the good Tennessee Mariota and the one game from Las Vegas last year, Mariota? Or are you going to get the... Bad Mariota, where Kyle just said he's getting right. sacked out yeah. the wazoo, can't read the field. Right. Obviously, he has, he has an injury history because he's a guy that runs the ball and a lot. And he fumbles the ball a lot. As fumbles does, the ball a as lot. Does exactly. Taylor Heineke. Yes, you're exactly right. So, no, nah, Taylor Injury Heineke, history? Yes, he does. Oh, no, every no, no, game no, he started. Oh, no, 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 every no, game no, he no, started, he's been injured in. But, yeah, so in the beginning, I was definitely a no guy. And depending on how much he's going to cost, I would probably still be a no guy because I think they're going to want – Way too, way much more than what he's worth. Right. But with that being said, there's nobody left as far as like a veteran free agent out there that could really fit the system. So would I be mad if they brought him in and gave it like maybe one of the third round picks or a fourth round pick for him? Probably not. But like Kyle said, in that if that manner, you might as well go with the cheaper contract and the rookie right. contract, which would be that's a, a guy like Kellen Mond, who's kind of Marcus Mariota light. And that that's yeah. Yeah, and that that's kind of where I'm at, Kyle. You you brought up a good point about the contract. That's really what it depends on. It depends on the money, and it depends on, like, if you're just bringing them in here to compete, like, if, we, if we're if we set with Heineke and Allen and you're going to have them battle it out, why not throw Mariota in there and just let the best man win? If Mariota's not good enough, then he doesn't win. Good, awesome that we, that we got somebody else. But you're right. It, I mean, there's a lot that has to go on between now and the draft, so we're going to find kind of find out where some of these quarterbacks you know, fall. Maybe maybe Mond rises a little bit. Maybe he's going to go the end of one. You know, maybe some – Something's going to happen because the board's not set, and I'll say that. You know what I just actually could see happening? I just kind of like just, just popped in my head. It's just been thrown out there before, but I think that with Alex Smith saying that he wants to come back and like say he wants to play, obviously, like I said, I was talking to my coworker today, and I was like, I don't think he's going to be back in Washington. If anyway, he goes anywhere, he'll go down to Jacksonville and kind of be that quarterback guru mentor with Urban Meyer to Trevor Lawrence. Mm, yeah. um, but I could definitely see a path where – they bring him back on a reduced salary, and he's somehow in the room. I don't know if he's going to compete, back up third stringer, and then, then they draft – exactly. Right. And then they draft a guy like Kellen Mons. Yeah. They kind of let Alex Smith and Taylor Heineke and Kyle yeah. Allen yeah. all kind of like groom him into one, and then all of a sudden Kellen Mond becomes that guy. 
And so then, I wouldn't be yeah. I wouldn't be too mad at that. Neither would I. The only thing Alex Smith's price tag is even higher than Mariota's. Well, well, that's, that's why I said that. Yeah. No, no, I know that's what I'm saying. So it's gonna yes, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. But yeah, if they can yeah. do that, I think that's the perfect situation. If Kellamon to learn from Mariota, I mean, I'm sorry to learn from Alex Smith and those guys who know the playbook. Oh yeah. 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 Look, and that's the one thing that kind of scares me. Like if Alex Smith is brought back, and let's just say it's Taylor Heineke, Alex Smith. And Kyle Allen, that scares the hell of me because all the three guys were on the roster last year and they all got hurt, you yeah, know? So yeah. you kind of have that uncomfortability. Now with Mariota, obviously, you know, I would be comfortable with him as a backup because you have that veteran that, that can step in like he did for the Raiders and do pretty well for you. But if he's starting 16 games for you, that scares the hell out of me. That tells me we're not going to go win the division. I don't have much a stock in Mariota at whatsoever. And it all depends on what we give up for him. I'd much rather go for the rookie. And so who I, do you want to see as a starter day right. one? I, I want to see Kellen Mond. To be so honest. you're 100 percent already sold on. Kellen I don't even oh, think yeah. that's even like attainable but, because but, I know, I know, I know. Because he's a later round pick. He's not gonna unless he like comes out and just like. But one thing that does right. one thing that does really like get me sized though is if Taylor does win that job off of a competition and imagine he does hit all of those incentives. Can you imagine how good this team could be if Taylor yeah, Heineke did right. play like he did against oh, Tampa? Oh yeah. Tampa right and here. with making and $4 million at most? Right. Imagine that. And, I mean, you, and, you are playing with house money at that point, dude. You are oh, exploding. Yeah. I will say the one thing that, I mean, it kind of folds on my argument that I was making earlier, but Heineke did say the only reason that he got injured was because yeah. he was going all this out. Was a, it was yeah. all out. He was like, I'm diving for the pylon. If this is a game where we have two more games left and we haven't won the division yet, I'm not diving for that pylon. I'm going to play smart. So he was like, I kind of left it on the field the only two times I've started my career. But you're already 100% sold. Kelman coming in here to start. What happens if Kelman goes and they have his workouts and he just doesn't show much and Kelman ends up being like a sixth, seventh round pick? No, I don't think it'll be even that. Even I don't even think that's a possibility at this point. Based you don't on think that's a possibility? No, remember, remember what everybody was saying about Jake Fromm being a top five pick. Well, yeah, Jake Fromm's different. Jake Fromm was like didn't have what Kellen Mond offers, especially with the Senior Bowl I mean, and yeah, what he, he had produced. The experience and everything. Yeah, right? that's why I definitely think Kellen Mond. Uh, that's why I was contemplating. I'm on, just saying, so much can happen between now and the draft that taking a flyer on who's projected to be a mid round quarterback right now and saying that's the guy, that's the starter. That's a little. That's a little risky. No, no, that's what I would love. That's what I would love. Oh, to well, have everybody happen. would love that. Yeah, yeah everybody yeah. would love because that. Because the oh, reason yeah. being is like it's reminiscent of what happened with the Cowboys when Tony right. Romo getting injured in the preseason, right, right, and then Dak coming in looking good against a really good offensive line with the running game and everything. That's what I could kind of see yeah. with Kellen Mond, a Russell Wilson type so. of situation yeah. when he took over from Matt Flynn. He came in and per and did so well. They're like, oh yeah, let's do it. And are you saying this because he's a light skinned African American gentleman? <laughs> no, he picked in the middle round. He's a mobile quarterback. I will no, I will tell you though. I absolutely I'm love his athleticism. No, I absolutely oh, yeah. love how uh, when he does escape out of the pocket, he does not yeah. look to run. He's always oh, yeah. keeping his eyes downfield, and he seems to always put the ball in the right spot. And I think the it that's the probably the best recipe for success for this yeah. Washington football that, that, team. I right think now. that would be the. And you're really the one who sold me on Mond. I, I do think that that would be the best recipe, but. Yeah. And I now our next question is from Burroughs Oi! in the Oi, UK, oh. the DC Tweet Team Podcast. You just had Kelvin Harmon on yesterday. Congratulations to there you Burroughs. Go, Burroughs. Hey. Who do you think our main threat will be in the NFC East next season and why, Hall? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, I'll probably go Dallas just based off of uh, you got Dak coming back, who's probably, well, not him. He's the best quarterback in the division at yeah. this point in time. Uh, offensive line, if they can stay healthy. Uh, the defense is obviously kind of probably the worst in the division. I have to put it like that. Yeah. Even the defense is probably the worst in the division. But obviously you saw in the beginning of the season, this offense can put up massive points to kind of cover the holes of the poopy defense. I know they started off rough, but poopy. I, I feel like if Dak never got injured, they probably would have turned it around and won some games. So I'll probably go our most hated, hated, hated rival, the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to say the Giants, dude. We had Logan Paulson on last week, and he Did you talked. Say about, Daniel Jones is poop. Yeah, he is. Um, but uh, <laughs> he he had talked about how the Giants' de defense is probably the most comparable to Washington's defense. You know, he, especially he in, thinks uh, during the season, he said he straight up said the Giants' defense is better than Washington. Yeah, and so that's why I think like they're probably going to be the better fit, especially with Saquon, where they have that fun that foundation in place where they run the football a lot, play good defense. They're going to be put in a good position right now. Yeah. Right. 
And so I definitely think it's going to – it could be them. Uh, but you never know with Philly. Maybe Jalen Hurts comes out and looks that's, like Mike Vick 2.0. You never that's know. The, right. That's the thing. Nobody saw us be competing for the division right. last year, and all of a sudden we come out. But, uh, yeah, it's tough, obviously. I mean, those are really the only two logical choices is Dallas and, and New York because New York is kind of like Logan said. They're kind of on pace with us and rebuilding. And Philly's there, falling and apart at the seams. Philly's Howie Roseman falling, took Philly's a grenade. Ripped, yeah, Philly's <laughs> ripped apart. Um, but, yeah, Dallas, I mean – Dallas is their offense just has they're so good and they could realistically I mean with their draft pick they they make the right pick on defense all of a sudden that defense could be better could be middle of the pack if they get the right guy if they bring in the right person but yeah I don't know I just I like I'm a Joe Judge guy I've said it before but I'm sold on Joe Judge the tennis balls on the hands the fighting of the offensive line coach (laughs) I'm a Joe Judge guy so I'm gonna go with the New York football giants at but Dallas is – they could easily be them. Yeah, look, and this is way too early to be doing this. So much can happen throughout the season. That's you know, like right, nobody boys. expected Dak to get right. injured, Saquon to get injured. So yeah. much happened uh, over the off season, uh for that to be the case. But I will say, if the Cowboys do like they're projected, if they do draft Caleb Farley, I will be pissed. I That's what I'm saying. Imagine them getting a Caleb Farley. Or it's J.C. Like, Horn. I, look, I, if you look hey, at their hey. defense – Second half of the season, though, obviously, like the numbers are like skewed because skewed, of, right, right, so right. bad in the beginning. But they were a middle of the pack defense of the last like seven, they, eight. They games. improved for so, sure. Yeah. They, and who's their defensive coordinator now? Who did they just bring in? Uh, uh what's his face from Jacksonville? Nolan, didn't they? No, no, no uh, Dan Quinn. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Dan, uh, yeah Quinn. Dan, Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn yeah. is a very, very good coach, and they got talent at linebacker. They got some decent young corners. If they brought in a Caleb Farley as somebody. Mm, that would suck. I wouldn't want. I, that would not be tight. Yeah, and one <laughs> uh, hypothetical. One hypothetical I heard about Brandon Sheriff that I would absolutely love. You know, because I've been ta- I've talked about before how I don't Normal think transition here. I don't think that we should go in and and sign Sheriff to a huge contract right, extension, right, right, let him right. walk because we have to save that money. But one thing that was hypothetical is push out there was like a, a one year deal. Um, just getting him back for one year, approve it kind of deal with him. Uh, and not for the, a lot too. Not for a 15 or right. 16. And I would absolutely love that idea okay. because you're kind of saying, okay, if you can stay healthy, yeah, earn that contract and everything. But that 15, 16 mil per, it's too much. And if Brandon yeah. really does want to stay here and keep that nucleus, I would absolutely love that. Yeah. Yeah. All he's going to say, or his agent will say is, yeah, I got injured, but I only missed like a game or two. And then I came back and became an all pro. So yeah, his agent's just going to be like, I'm the f- guy's first, first team all pro. Yeah. And he's going to be like, I already proved it. So yeah. But I'm telling you, dude, I think Brandon Sheriff is one of those dudes that wants to stay here. And it's one of he those does. things. You know yeah, what I mean? I think he said he, he, said he yeah. wants to keep right. on building what he's already started on. And obviously, he's a guy that's seen the lows and he sees how they're rising. Right. And he sees what the highs and could be, so he I wants think, to be a part of that. Remember last season? But he season, also wants to get paid. In 2019, it seemed like he was kind of iffy about returning. He was like, well, we'll see. You know, we got a lot. A lot's got to happen, you know, uh, blah, blah, blah. But blase, blase. Um, but <laughs> I, th- I really think that Ron Rivera completely sold him. Like, now all of a sudden he's like, I want to be back here. I want to be in Washington. Yeah. Like, no questions asked right off the bat. I, I mean, Trent back. Williams even, like, even wants back. He was, yeah, yeah. allegedly. <laughs> yeah, right. It's... Uh, I mean, Ron. I mean, look, KPL, uh, he was at he was in Seattle when they first started building that like the uh, Legion of Doom and Russell Wilson and all that. He saw what Pete Carroll was building. He was like, Legion was of Doom. There that. weren't wrestlers there. What did I say? Legion. Oh, I Legion said Legion of, of Doom. Doom. <laughs> Legion, yeah, Legion They're of base Doom. painting, giving people the Doom's <laughs> device. And... <laughs> but yeah, he said he saw what they were building, and he was like, it's kind of remnant to like what Ron Rivera. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hall's Hall's computer went out. Look at his frozen. face. Look at his face. I feel like that's how he looks ninety percent of the time. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's hysterical. Hey, real quick before we get out of here though, Deers and Beers, Eric wants to know: Is there a left tackle in free agency that you want Washington to go after? And I'm going to oh. make a quick. I don't. I don't think so. If they're going to go after a left tackle, it's going to be through the draft. There's so many that are capable. That's right. I yeah. Uh, in free agency, no. Um, unless they for some reason thought that Alejandro Villanueva was going right. to be better than Cornelius Lucas, which I don't think you can say right now, just because he's older, his plays declined. Yeah, hey, I love him better. being a, a military and army veteran. So dude. That's, that's oh, my, yeah, that's my his, dude right there. His plays declined. I think you get the same thing yeah. out of Cornelius Lucas, only better right now. Um, and yeah, I think you're right. How the only way that they go left tackles the draft. Yeah. What about you, Hall? Is there a free agent left tackle you'd like to see Washington go after? 
quickly? Uh, I haven't even looked at the list, but I know I know you were just talking about Villanueva. He's really the only person I know on that list. But right. like Reed just said, not Orlando kind of Bloom, if he becomes available. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, Orlando Bloom. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, yeah, but you gotta like trade for him. So I mean, it's kind of yeah, like I and know. and they're saying right now it's gonna take a first round pick to get yeah, Orlando yeah. Brown because he's a franchise left tackle. It's one of those pimple situations. You got to wait it out, especially for him. You know what I mean? I would look, I don't think anyone's going to give up that first rounder. There's so many capable left tackles. This is like the worst year for, uh, for Brown to be able to force himself out. I don't know, man. A team like the Jaguars that has two first round picks anyway, and they need to protect Trevor Lawrence. That's a solid, that's a solid they point. Be like, Hey, you know what? We'll trade you the 20, whatever pick for him. Right. Yeah. Hey, that's yeah, a solid. Sure. Hey, that's a solid. I, I don't yeah. disagree with that at all. Well, yeah. everybody, Thank you very much for joining us for the hot seat, our brand new segment. Thank you to everyone for your questions. Jeff, Mike, Eric, Andy, Burroughs, we, we love air, you guys. Thank you to Mark Bullock for being able to stop by, give us his uh, expertise on the X's and O's. That was phenomenal. And then we'll see you guys on Tuesday. And before you guys do, if you, you want to be able to rock the W hat like uh, like Reed is, trying to mimic me right now with the Burgundy Zone hat, you can go to Silver FX dot co dot uk search the burgundy zone there for their european kind of section and then you can go to our instagram page to our bio into the link tree account you can go get our merch off of teespring where you can get the w sweatshirt like reed is wearing right now so make sure you guys go and do that we'd absolutely love it we got mugs masks zip up jackets t-shirts you get reed's face on your shirt if you want to be able to walk around and look goofy like reed does all the time it's yeah. a perfect spot for that. All right, yeah. everybody. We I'm have Kyle. Masks if you want to rob a bank, we have oh. <laughs> and I'm adopted. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll see you guys on Thursday. Washington football. Hey. What's up, everyone? This is Kyle from the Burgundy Zone. We are releasing our own merch to support the show. If you want to rock the Burgundy Zone logo or you want to see Reed's face on your shirt, we got it. We're starting with t-shirts, hoodies, and zip up. So if you're a fan of the show, make sure you snag one before they are gone. Check out the link in our bio on Instagram, or you can find the link in the description of the video. Thanks again for all your support.